wanted to welcome you all. This is uh, an international day of forest and it is also a day where we join together and uh, we really hope you guys are the change. There's a, a great sense of hope with the young people like you, uh, but at the same time you can take it much more uh, uh, in a, to a broader group. So even I hope when you prepare for these uh, debates, you are influencing your classrooms, your school, your home and your communities. That means we also um, want everyone to have a strong voice and to have that voice heard throughout the region. So our approach is really to, um, to include the youth uh, movement. Um, I also agree that the next generation is doing a much better job than my generation ever did about voicing concerns for the environment, voicing concerns about climate change, about the consumer decisions that we're making on a day-to-day -day basis. We're hearing you. Um, you know, your voices are really getting strong and uh, powerful with marches like on Friday. You will inherit the earth. You will pay taxes. Uh, but we also hope that you will inherit political power to drive change. And uh, maybe my last message is please keep driving the change. Never forget about what we lose when we lose nature. And although we haven't done so well, my generation, we're with you and we're going to fight this fight. Our world is constantly changing and we as human beings are expanding to every inch of the globe. This expansion through the means of mining and other land-based developments has heavy detrimental effects on our rainforests, our jungles and our rivers. This is why we need to reshape the forestry curriculum to adapt to the changing world. The loss of forests represents a loss of natural heritage. Changing the way we view trees is now a priority, and this can only be done by separating forests from other resources within the curriculum. Trees must be elevated above the realm of consumerism. To fulfill our goal, we need to not just simply teach youth about the benefits of forests, but also being able to create opportunities for them to act upon those beliefs. There are many steps to creating a responsible and more mindful consumer, but we believe that teaching youth is just the first step. What we want to do is to be able to guide people's experience through the steps of becoming a more committed consumer. We think that in order for people to become more responsible as a consumer, we need this education. Because right now, people are unaware about, uh, for, about issues of forest. People do not know the relationship between landfill waste management and forest, which has detrimental impacts on both human and the forest. And as much as they want to protect their future, they have their present to protect as well. And this is why we believe that we should bring in green innovation in order to help with coexistence between life of these people and the nature. One advantage of green technology is that it allows for both things to happen at the same time. Forestry education isn't simply raising awareness about these issues, but it also, it's also about informing farmers and producers about how to develop more sustainable products. Therefore, more people will be aware of the need for sustainable products, and producers will also be aware of how to create sustainable products. In addition to this, there is evidence that education can spur on action. In fact, only last week, we have seen a global school strike. If you feel that education has not resulted in any meaningful action, then how can you explain this? It's our position that by providing equal opportunities, we create forest professionals from all segments of youth to address the issues of development. They can take big steps to reduce inequality. As we are part in the new generation, we agree that an equality to study forestry will help reduce inequality issues in the world. But it's only one part. If we want to reduce the inequality from the social in the world, we must rely on all forms of social infrastructure to develop consequently, such as family institutions, political pro institution, financial institution, anyway, the absolute indicator of the true change is government policy and law. In order to conserve or to learn about anything, education is key. And 
in order for the next generation to start sustain, uh, sustainable living and start conserving, they need to be educated first. Oftentimes, uh, youth nowadays are not really exposed to things like forests or are not really out in the open. We usually spend time in school or, or uh, going online. The, the youth is the next generation and because they're the next generation, they should be the ones really responsible for protecting and preserving the environment. We need to focus more on educating youth because they are the driving seat of change. We could help other people in like uh, other areas of the world to be also be um, educated in forests as well. Uh, studying in ed education that concerns about environmental issues actually address and make us more aware of our actions. We'll eventually be the ones who run the, who, who run the world. So knowing what to do about forestry, knowing how to preserve our forests is a good start in making our world a more ecologically better place.